Hey, good evening, New Hope Fellowship. Can you believe it? Day 32 of our soap journey together. Hey, I want to say this. Please look on our webpage blog and in the app where it talks about the blog. Um, all of my soaps and writing are up there. Please post your feedback. Give your soaps. Let's make it learning community. That's why we're posting them. Through the rest of the year, they'll get posted. Other staff members, soaps will get posted. We want to make that available to you. And remember, don't get discouraged. If you're, if you're behind, start today. Don't try to play catch up because you never will. Um, to start today and move forward. There's no scorecard. There's no grade. It's you and Jesus. Don't compare your soap with anybody else. It's God speaking to you. This is our journey together. So, hey, today, my soap, uh, I love the title. I, I gave the title, The Holy Spirit Breaks Through Prejudice. And um, Acts 8, 14 through 17. Now, when the apostles of Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent to them Peter and John, two heavy hitters, huh? Who came down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For he, for he had not yet fallen on any of them, but they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. In other words, water baptism. Then they laid their hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. Now here's my observation. The entire chapter is about the miraculous spread of the gospel but I was struck by the passage because the rift between the believers in the southern section of the kingdom and the, that worshipped in Jerusalem and the Samaritans, who were considered half-breeds, uh, could not worship in Jerusalem, was huge. It was a huge rift. Uh, Pat McCluskey, who is uh, a Catholic scholar, he writes this, Imagine the hatred between the Serbs and the Muslims in modern Bosnia. The enmity between the Catholics and the Protestants in Northern is Ireland, or the feuding between street gangs in Los Angeles or New York, and you have some idea of the feeling and its causes between the Jews and the Samaritans in the times of Jesus. Both politics and religious, religion was involved, according to the Encyclopedic Dictionary of the Bible, which is published by McGraw-Hill. Lewis F. Hartman says the feelings of it will probably went back there to the separation of the northern and southern Jewish kingdoms, but there was a lack of unity even prior to that with the tribes of Jacob. And, uh, and, and what fascinated me, if you remember John 4.4 4 is kind of a backdrop, the women at the well, uh, where Jesus says, you won't, there'll come a time where you won't uh, worship in Jerusalem or Samaria, but that where this where you're going to worship in truth and in the spirit, it's going to be the spirit wherever you are is going to be a place of worship. Jesus communicated to the disciples that this gospel uh, would make them witnesses to Jerusalem and Samaria as well as the uttermost parts of the world. He intentionally told them, not just Jerusalem, you're going to go into Samaria, and this gospel is going to be for the Samaritans as well. Uh, and the power and the fullness of the Holy Spirit broke, broke down ethnic prejudice. Uh, they, had, they had been water baptized, but not yet baptized in the Holy Spirit. And one of the evidences of the Holy Spirit filling people was that the walls of national identity no longer was a barrier. And here's my application today. We tend to hide behind labels, whether it's our affiliation with a political party or a denomination. I do not think the Lord is opposed to denominations because I think he creates a lot of them, but I do think he is not pleased with denominationalism. I cannot allow my own prejudice to ever be the box that limits what Jesus is capable of doing in all people. This gospel is for all people, and when one is full of the Spirit, it is important to always consider that God desires to advance his mission regardless of the walls that I may put up. Prejudice is can come in many forms, and the Holy Spirit is a prejudice breaker. There's a lot of prejudice, age, gender, uh, you know, all kinds of things. But God breaks down the walls. Here's prayer. And notice what I said. I'm not praying anymore, God, do I have prejudice? How much is left in me? And that's the prayer. And so I put this, O oh Lord, I pray that you would work in me the power of the Spirit and the work of breaking all prejudice in me. I do not say to you that I have no prejudice, but instead, please remove any prejudice that may remain in me. 
Lord, may I be contagious with your love for all people. I pray this in Jesus' name, amen. And I hope that's our prayer as a church and as a people. God, break down the walls of prejudice so that we can be on mission and contagious with your unconditional love and grace for all people. Hey, I love you. New Hope Fellowship, God bless you. And let's keep on using our soap. We'll see you.